Morning all, it's a quick uh, demonstration of FT8 this morning. I'm using MSHV. Um, there's a, a number of different of these packages or different types of packages that can be used and the common most used one of course is WSJT. However I use this one it's got a number of different features which I'll go over in a different video to give some uh, extra functionality and I've also found that when I'm doing direct comparisons with some of the other um, products that or that are available in this area that this one tends to conduct more decos at any one time. So anyway this morning I'm on 12 meters I'm using my uh, log periodic it's a four element log periodic which gives me full coverage of 21 through to um, 30 megahertz. So at the moment there's quite a bit of JA activity so I've got my filters in use I don't know if you can see that there uh, and that's switching out uh, any traffic local traffic so anything um, or any transmissions that are from Europe are being completely filtered so I don't see them so I only see everything that's outside of Europe and you can see there's a number of different um, operators there from the Far East and in particular from JA now I'll just inlay the screen from my FTDX uh, 101. I've selected transmit now and I'm just going to reply to this JA. You can see that he's coming in at 08 and if I take a quick look around on the next uh, transmission because my radio is on the bench next to me we'll see at what power level that's at so that's set at around 40 watts is what that's transmitting with you'll see that on the screen from the inlay as well um, and then uh, we will see if we can get a reply hopefully it does seem fairly busy so hopefully we'll get a reply and he's at a, a pretty good level now because he's coming in at minus seven which is a fairly strong uh, signal and one that would be very audible if we were on the SSB bands. And very luckily and uh, true to um, what happens with these kind of things when you're doing these, usually you, know, you, you won't get a reply or any result at all. But he's come back with a reply of minus 13. So for that 40 watts, that's fairly respectable. Uh, I'm now sending the RR73 which is missing some of the steps with MSHV which is one of the, the, the reasons that I like this particular one uh, because it allows you to the, complete the QSO a little bit quicker with some of the unnecessary steps if you like in the QSO uh, being removed. Some of the purists might uh, believe that those extra ones need to be in place but good enough for me and for most people and you can see he's also sent back the 73 on that one so a fairly easy uh, communication because of the conditions at the moment and the time of day which is an ideal time for JA um, so what I'm I'm doing because I'm on a relatively low power if you like with that 40 watts yes I know we've got the the, the log periodic which is an equivalent of say two maybe in some cases three elements on that band um, we are in a better position than a lot of people that would uh, in on this band because you tend not to get so many beam antennas so without the beams and with much more simple antennas being the norm here um, you've got a, a much better a chance of being a, a big gun if you know what I mean so that's where we are I've just re or, or sent a CQ now not a CQ, I've, I've replied to the CQ of um, JR25HA and we'll see if we get a response to him. The reason that I've picked him and the reason that I picked the last guy is because they were so strong. I know that I'm going to be, if these are on kilowatts or many hundreds of watts, these particular guys are probably going to be in a much better position to receive me because whether it's high power or not, they've got a much better antenna system. And one of the things that we need to remember, and this is when you know people say to you, uh, oh, I've worked the world on my wire. Yes, you have, but it's very few occasions when you're gonna work somebody across the pond or to Australia or VK or Japan that's using wire antennas and you're using wire antennas. It's usually the case that the person on the other end has doing the push-pull work with the beam 
um, to give you that extra little uh, lift as far as gain is concerned on your side. So you can see whilst I've been waffling on that that JR25HA has given me um, a minus 15 report. Um, I've since sent the RR73 and he's sent his confirmed 73 as well. So that was in straight overs. We didn't need any repeat overs on both of those. So it just goes to show how with the uh, conditions as they are at the moment that we're able to conduct some fairly um, quick QSOs without um, hanging up the band too much and uh, be able to complete in, in um, reasonable periods of time. And as I say, with MHSV, because I'm able to filter out, you can see on the display at the top actually here, that there is a, a, a hell of a lot of traffic that's going on here. Um, and with that, uh, there's gonna be a lot of European stations as well, but rather than everything scrolling off the screen, I'm just able to see the, uh, the important stuff that I want to see. So on this now, you can see that um, I'm replying to uh, a guy, or I'm, I've replied to his CQ, which is uh, JG2MLI. But at the same time, I'm actually being called by another JA here too, which is JA0NFP. So pretty good times at the moment. Hopefully that helps out. I will go into some of the setup arrangements, how we need to do the clocks, because your clock on your PC needs to be absolutely spot on with GPS, um, and what the, the various different advantages are of some of the different packages. So hopefully that was of use today. See you again on the next one. Bye for now.